after the PBR World Finals takes the main stage this week in Music City. Pacheco finds the promised land. It's the final PBR major of the 2018 season, where a victory can prove to be a major move up the stand. Cooper Davis is your 2016 Music City Knockout Champion. And later lead to a PBR gold buckle. Cooper Davis is your 2016 PBR World Champion. With just eight regular season events remaining, the Music City Knockout could once again be the turning point to this year's PBR World title. It is the PBR's annual trek to Tennessee, and here in Music City, plenty of riders have plans to make some noise. With a veritable king's ransom of points available, Bridgestone Arena may help one rider stake his claim to the crown. Here at the last major of the year, there could be a major reshuffling of the top 10. Any one of the top seven in the world could be our world number one after Sunday. Let's bring you upstairs once again to the PBR's Skybox. Hello, everybody. Alongside nine-time world champion Ty Murray and two-time PBR world champion Justin McBride, I'm Craig Ummer. We're going to say it a lot. It is the last major, which means it's the last chance for one rider to gobble up a huge amount of points. And I have to figure, guys, this weekend's going to have major ramifications to who is this year's world champion. He may not be our current world number one, Justin, but guess what? Jose Vitor Lemmy comes in with a hot load, a hot hand, excuse me, and a boatload of confidence. Yeah, and when you talk about the 2017 World Finals average champion, this is a guy that has continued to impress. And he's got such an aggressive, flashy riding style that you see him get every point out of every bull that he draws. And the other great thing about it is, he doesn't need a certain bull to fit him. They all fit this guy, and for me, that's why I think Jose Vitor Lemmy is the best bull rider in the world right now. Ty, when it comes to this part of the season, of course we're going to talk about the guys that are going to use this weekend to make a run at a world championship. But I can't believe we are talking about J.B. Mooney needing a good weekend simply to make the world finals. Well, J.B. Mooney, seen, you know, he's been the most dynamic bull rider in the PBR. He's seen every side of the coin. He's been in every situation, but he's never been in this situation. He's a guy that's closer to the end of his career than he is the beginning. He's had a ton of injuries stacked against him, a lot of recent ones. He's fighting just to try to make the PBR World Finals. I think that's something that none of us thought we would ever see. So, you know, we've always talked about he's the guy that when you back him in a, into a corner, that's when he's the toughest. Well, he's in a corner deeper now than he's ever been, and does he still have the fight in him that it's going to take to dig himself out of this hole? That's yet to be seen. I think he does. A lot of questions marks obviously surrounding JB. One thing that isn't a question, he has millions of fans around the world willing him to eight seconds every time he gets on the back of the bull. He's standing by with Leah Garcia. It has been an uncharacteristic year and a half for JB. What's really been the most challenging? Your position, your injuries, the riding, the fans. Uh, just getting over the shoulder injury. You know, my whole career, I've pretty much been able to tape it back together and kind of hold everything together. And the shoulder I had to have surgery on and I had to work really hard at getting back where I could have motion in it. And that's probably been the hardest part of everything. And, and you know, injuries are building up on me, but that's the way boy riding goes. Shoulder's okay now? Feels good enough. Perfect. Let's check in with Shorty out of the arena who has the closest view of this event. Well, Lee, I got to tell you, I love being here in Nashville, uh, Tennessee. And one of the reasons is this format that, that we have here, because I think it goes back to the root of bull riding, which is that old school never quit mentality. Yeah, you want to ride your bulls for 90. You want to beat the, the other guy you're competing against. But if things go bad, having that willingness to put your body on the line and never say quit can take you a long ways in this format. We start with the man who is good, it seems, in every single format he competes in. Three-time PBR world champ, Silvano Alves. In this round, he faces a bull by the name of Slinging Tears. Yeah, and Silvano, this is a guy we talk about it a lot. He can still get the job done when he wants to. He's up at 4.87 seconds. 
So it gets to be very simple at this point. If Sean Willingham, who is up next, lasts 4.88 seconds or longer, he will advance to round two. Watch how this bull just keeps running him back off of his rope. You know, most of the ride, he's sitting literally on the flank strap and just running him back that far. And when you get back like that, you have no, you know, you're not in the center of that spin. So all the whip is coming right to the end of your arm. Well, what we're finding out now, Ty, is that Alves has challenged to see whether or not the judges feel the bull hipped himself. And if that's the case, Alves will get a re-ride. And that becomes interesting, doesn't it, Justin, in terms of when these re-ride falls? Because with the head-to-head -head format, they have to go almost immediately. Yeah, and I think you'll see here the bull never hit his hip leaving the chute. I think Ty could be challenging right here where the bull hit his head on the chutes if he felt like that changed the momentum and, and caused, the, caused the buck off. I don't think there's a judge around that that's going to give him the call to go that to go Silvano's way. No, I don't either. And right here, as you can see, as this bull's head hits, but look how it doesn't slow him down. It doesn't change his momentum. It, it doesn't really do anything, and it's not leaving the shoot as well. No re-ride awarded, so that means Silvano's time stays officially 4.87. And now as we start to set up about Sean Willingham and Crash, let's take a look at the way this format will work in terms of how many points are on offer in the money. But really, it's the big money, right? The million dollars at the end of the year where these points are really going to pay dividends. Well, yeah, that's, that's what's telling the whole story. All of that stuff up there, there's a lot of money, lots of points. But the guys, they're looking at it to win a world championship. Or in J.B. Mooney's case, he wants to garner a lot of these things to make the world finals. Sean Willingham prepping on crash, but let's go revisit the Silvano Alves situation real fast, Mac. You said it last week. You just want to see consistency from the judges. So now they've set the standard for the weekend. I think that's exactly right. When we all watch an NFL game, you know, the first pass interference call you see, that's fine, however they call it. You just want to see it that way the whole time. Now, we've seen they did not give Silvano a rewrite right there, so they shouldn't the entire event for things similar to that, Ty. Yeah, that's, I mean, that's the key all the way down the line in, in a judge sport. The thing that a rider has to know is that's not something he can control. Sean Willingham leaves no doubt. Willingham moving on to round number two. That was awesome, man. I mean, here you're looking at it. Coming into this, Willingham knows he's got to be about five seconds just to advance. Well, in five seconds, he was in a real fight right here against this bull. Willingham did not weaken Ty. I love to see the amount of effort that Sean Willingham put out right here on a really cool bull. Yeah, and Sean Willingham's 38 years old. That's the impressive part. You know, this is a guy that has loved this sport for a long time. And, you know, you've got to love it a lot to be able to do it that long. And, and he still seems fresh. When you see him in the locker room, he's still excited to be here. Let's send it down to Leah. Sean Willingham, congratulations on coming back with a vengeance. What's your mindset like? Uh, I'm just here to have fun. Uh, this is my last, uh, last go, so. I gotta make the best of it while I'm still here. We will see him again, Craig. Allison Sosa getting his chance. A late entry due to Keyshawn Whitehorse's scratch. So the Brazilian now gets an opportunity at a, these points that we've talked about. He's facing a bull by the name of Mr. Jim. Yeah, big chance right here. And this is a guy, he's done some really good things late in the spring, on into the summer. They're carrying over for him. So this is a huge chance, and he's been riding really good. That's why he got the call to be at this event. It's a great opportunity for him. Here goes. Gonna get called for a touch. And the clock officially stops just over three seconds. So the next rider, Cole Livingston tie, isn't gonna have to last very long, but I'm sure you'll point out he shouldn't be thinking like that. Well, you know, you always hear Justin talk about worrying riding right to left, and that's kind of what he's thinking about here. He's thinking about dropping over there to the left when he feels that bull go that way, but he quit the timing of the up and down, the jump and the kick that the bull has, and you can't leave that part out. It doesn't matter which direction they go. You've still got to ride the up and down. Cole Speaking Livingston. 
missed most of this season. Didn't return until Columbus earlier this spring after off-season shoulder surgery. And boy, oh boy, Mac, he is trying to make up for lost time. Had a great summer run, and this bull cyclone gives him a mighty chance. Yeah, and the last time we seen this young 20-year-old, the last major we seen him at in Las Vegas a few months back, this guy was really impressive. I expect good things from him. Let's go for the end. Does Cole Livingston weather the storm? But it seemed like he was smooth as silk amidst Cyclone. I mean, this looks as good as you can look. And this is the way you want to start this, this weekend off is big confidence. This is one that turns back into his hand and is bucking. And watch how he, you know, he's not questioning any movement. He's not seeing where it goes. He knows exactly where he needs to be at every point. And you can see him opening up with that outside leg and going, hey, look, I can do this one legged as well. That looked nice. And those bullfighters did an awesome job there, too, to save his bacon. The top 12 riders in the world have a bye into round number two, but we've already seen two riders take advantage of that extra round to perhaps help them towards the cumulative point total, which is worth 300 points here. Willingham and Livingston moving on. 25th PBR Unleash the Beast on CBS Sports Network is sponsored by Las Vegas. Explore now and visit lasvegas.com by b and Trailer Hitches, makers of the number one selling gooseneck hitch in America and the official hitch of the PBR. And by Monster Energy, Unleash the Beast. When it comes to Majors Mac, it just seems like the Brazilians know how to do it. Yeah, and that's because they know how to stack up rides consistently, bull after bull. Amongst the Brazilians, Ty, guess what? Pacheco with four wins of his own. Hey, there's not there's nothing better than being surrounded with monster girls <laughs> and a hundred thousand dollar check in your hand. It just doesn't get any better. You know it gets a little bit better if you earn twelve hundred and five points in the process. Fabiano Vieira doing just that last year. And look out, because this guy's got a lot of momentum behind him right now. Fabiano Vieira, as people have filled out their brackets, which like any office pool, we've got a lot of people who have done this behind the scenes. He is a sleeper pick for a lot of riders. He's going to face the winner of our next duel between Joao Ricardo Vieira and Marcus Gloria. This part of bracket A, definitely Brazilian breakdown. Joao Ricardo Vieira himself a two-time major winner. In fact, remember back in 2015, at the Iron Cowboy tie, he, that was the first major we had. Yeah, and you know, this guy has capitalized on him like, like no one else. He understands the importance of, of these majors and, and what they can do for your season. And, and I'll tell you what, quite frankly, I think he's a threat here as well. Mac, that same year, he would win last Cowboy standing. Yeah, and there's a common theme in both of these rides. Both of the Bulls went to the left. Joao has been very, very good on Bulls that go that direction. I think this one will stick to that script. Look for Joe, Joao to put one on the board here. Ma Deuce, the name of this Bull. Back in 2015, Joao almost 50% of his season points based on his major performance. That just shows how huge these things are, man. You win at these type of events, you give yourself a real chance. Yeah, you're right. He finished third overall that year, over $550,000 in prize money. That doesn't happen often, but Mac, you telegraphed it. The bull went to the left. We thought that would allow Vieira to be on lockdown, but instead, Ma Deuce able to have the upper hand, the quick buck off, 2.7. Yeah, forward movement in a bull is a killer, man. When they when they keep taking jumps forward right there instead of just wrapping it up and getting into a tight spin, and Joe Al stays back, that's why he catches all the power, and then you see him going forward when the bull's coming up, and it, he just gets all out of whack with everything. He's gonna have to watch his compatriot prep in the shoots now. 
beginning to get to know Marcus Gloria. His first event on the Premier Series was earlier this season. In fact, it was just last week, technically, in Tulsa. Before he goes, let's check in with Leah. He had what everyone's been calling the glorious summer, Marcos Gloria. He started at 96 in the world standings, and he made 630 points at various events, one winning the Calgary Stampede, and the other one was the Iron Cowboy in Canada. One of the things I talked about, Craig, was his debut in Tulsa, and he told me that he went there with a little bit too much confidence. He was with his heroes, bright-eyed, but yet he had all of this momentum coming over from the summer, and he truly thought, I'm gonna go out there and kick everybody's you-know-what, and then he got humbled. He said what makes him most angry is that he knew he could have ridden both of his bulls, especially his second one, and he doesn't want to let that happen again. Scott Kaiki Pacheco helping him prep right there. Seems ready, there's the nod. Bugle Boy goes left like the previous bull, but this time the rider can handle it. Marcus Gloria moving on to round two, Mac. Yeah, and I thought that was a really good ride. And coming off of, of Leah's points there, a guy can get humbled here. And it's great to have all the confidence. You've got to have it, but there's no shortcuts. You still got to put in the work when the gate opens. And Ty, I thought this was a really good ride on a tough bull. Yeah, this is a strong bull, you know, and he was kind of letting the bull make the first move each time is the thing that concerned me. But, you know, he was strong enough and kept working at it enough. It worked, but I'm going to tell you, as we go along, the bulls are going to get ranker, and that spot in the bull, the first move, ain't going to work throughout the, the rest of this competition. I think a lot of people are very interested to see how Derek Kolbaba handles this format, but he can't get ahead of himself. It starts facing Clemens time, a one from Deer Prairie Creek Buck and Bulls, but Mac, I'll go to you first. What do you think Kolbaba's chances are this weekend? Well, I think his chances are great because he's that talented of a young guy. For me, it all starts right here in the shoot with Kolbaba, his hand, He's got to put it in the right spot each and every time. The style of rope, the Brazilian style of rope that he uses, there's never a set spot. It has to do with how bull, how big the bull is, how wide his back is. So it really fluctuates time and time again. So a lot of the times, Cole Baba starts getting stuck into his hand or being too far to one side or the other. He's got to have all that right. When he rides like that, he can, oh! hey! Once he was on the ground, he just took a massive body blow from Clementine. He'll get the score, but the question becomes, will he be able to continue? Ty, that was a brutal hit. You know, this is a stark reminder that it's not over till it's over and you need to be out of the arena. You know, no whistle blows in this sport. So you make a good ride and that's where all your focus is. You know, you can watch him going through this and he's thinking, man, it's coming close. I'm doing great. I'm tapped off exactly where I need to be. This bull's changing direction. Right there, one little slip up and like lose a focus and getting off away from your hand like that puts you in bad position. Let's listen. <laughs> That is what it sounds like to get absolutely hammered by a hoof. Derek Kolbaba still being attended to by sports medicine. The score, 86 and a half points. But immediately, Mac, I'm reminded of a couple years ago when Fabiano Vieira beat Cooper Davis in a head-to-head -head in one of the later rounds. Fabiano couldn't advance because of a shoulder injury davis goes on to win the event yeah and cole bob there i'm glad to see him walking out on his own power can't say enough about the toughness of all these guys but will he be able to move forward now is the question well in one of the the bigger picture going back to what craig's talking about is not only did he go on to win the event but he went on to win the world that year and that shows the power of what this event right here has as far as points 
Colton Jesse has to put that all out of his mind. The 21-year-old faces real gun. We just showed you. If it's 86 and three quarters or above, basically it will be a moot point. Colton Jesse will not Kolbaba out, at least put him into the second chance bracket. So oddly enough, Kolbaba will have a number of hours to recover as opposed to just a few minutes. Colton Jesse, I know, Mac, impressed you at the Iron Cowboy earlier this year. Yeah, this is a young guy that I've got really high expectations for. I think he's got all of the tools that it takes. He's got a great style. He's kind of a taller, lanky kid. Doesn't seem to get too rattled by anything. I don't think the big event or the big name Bulls is going to bother this guy. And speaking of the score, I, I think this bull right here, he's going to be really close right there with Cole Baba. Last weekend, this bull was ridden by Lonnie West, the Canadian that has burst on the scene after a great summer of riding as well. Lonnie West rode him for 85 and three quarters. That's right, Mac, to your point. Just enough bull underneath him for Jesse to have a chance. And that, of course, is part of Cody Lambert's job. Whoa! Jesse will not get a chance to shine. Colton Jesse, for the moment, is sent to the second chance bracket due to his buck off. Cole Baba should advance if he's medically able. Keep your eye on his feet. Now, this is where it's critical to turn those toes out and have those spurs work for you. You see both feet whip back behind him. If you turn your toes out, that's going to put your spurs in, which is going to buy you that second chance. Now, don't get me wrong. You can't hold on to these bulls with your spurs, but they keep your feet from clicking back behind you like that. That's an instance that I think every pure bull riding fan loves to see, Mac, where, hey, the bulls are 50% of the equation. And on this day, real gun was better. We take a look at the A bracket. It is completely filled out for round number two. We'll see Davis against Willingham, Ramon DeLima, the former world number one against Cole Livingston, Fabiano Vieira will go up against his compatriot, Marcus Gloria, and it'll be Jose Vitor Lemmy against Derek Colbaba. We are just getting started in Nashville. Tomorrow at 5 Eastern, CBS Sports Network gets the ball rolling with the PWBA Columbus Open as top female bowlers compete in the stepladder finals only on the 24-hour home of CBS Sports. We have moved on to bracket B here in the Music City Knockout. A lot of great matchups to bring you. We're going to start with Tanner Byrne against Matt Triplett. We're going to get to see J.B. Mooney try his hand. Marchi with the big news last week, and you all also saw him on the pre-show. He has announced that 2018 will be his last year. Stetson Lawrence will try to knock out Alex Marsilio. But we start with the big Canadian, Tanner Byrne, who Ty is aboard Baby Boy. Yeah, we're seeing a lot of young bulls that the guys don't know a lot about. And, you know, that's kind of a, a part of the fun challenge that the guys go through in the course of the season is, you know, a lot of the bulls at this level, they get to know the book on and, and they see them a lot. But whenever you get these young bulls coming in here, you know, it just reminds you that this is a sport of reaction. Mac, do you think that is something that's changed with so this generation compared TV, to when Tanner you rode and when Ty Canadian. rode in terms of guys just knowing more about the Bulls, therefore studying them more? I think to an extent because there's so much more information available to these guys. They're on their phones all day watching videos of them. And, you know, so that we didn't have all of that available to us, so it was easier to not get in too big of a game plan. gotten a score but he did a great job to fight well into this ride it's going to be tough for Matt Triplett against Mr. Majestic this one ends at 6.95 so Tanner's doing a great job of just trying to gut it out but this is a smaller bull that's quick and athletic and you'll watch as the ride goes on his hips keep slick getting slid back further well, it's just physics after a while that when your hips are that far back, every time he lurches forward, it's going to jerk on your riding arm, which is going to pull you forward. You can see him trying to pedal with his feet, but there comes the jerk forward, and his feet aren't in a posi position to help keep him from going forward. 
he was battling it out, you know, and it was a good battle. But in the end, what the bull was doing finally just worked. So the standard becomes, based on that buck off, 6.96 seconds. And Mac, we were talking before the show began, and you really think this bull, Mr. Majestic, is a good one. I think this is the toughest bull in this round of competition. I've seen him go as a three and now a four-year-old bull. Uh, I've seen him, he's already been to the PBR World Finals one time, should be a round to the right. This bull is a handful, but Matt Triplett is a handful as well. This guy is back from injury. He's fired up to be here. He's ready to ride. They've met before. It was a quick buck off. Matt Triplett told me earlier he is a different Matt Triplett than when they met last season in Springfield. And that time the bull turned back so fast, Triplett didn't have a clue what happened. He went over his head, and that's the thing on this bull. When he does turn back, he really comes up under himself and wants to pull guys down over his shoulder. And, you, you know, you can see it playing a little bit on Triplett's mind right here. He's wanting to get everything just right before he leaves there. And, you know, this bull's basically standing in the middle of the chute. It's, it's not that he can't really get up on his rope. Matt's just worried about him having his head down there. Shorty, we can see Jesse trying to help get the bull into position. What are you seeing from your angle? Well, the bull just stood up right now, so I'm expecting him to get out of there at any time. But I'm going to tie, you know, on, on getting too picky in there because so many times it's just natural when you get that perfect seat inside the bucket. You, you want to try to stay there. Well, it's, it's a game where you got to give and take. you got to be moving from the get-go. <laughs> Triplets down and off and Tanner Byrne based on buck off time will be moving on. Matt Triplett took a bit of a blow as well and another rider heads to sports medicine. Yeah and that's one where where Triplett knew what the play was the offense was going to run and just couldn't stop it right there. He knows he's doesn't want to go over this bull shoulder that's what he tries to do to everybody and right there he bounces him off of it. You know, and that's where turning a toe out helps you so much. And, you know, Matt's a guy that doesn't ride with his toes out. He, he relies a lot on his effort and a lot on his balance, and that's fine until you get really out of position. And that's when those feet are going to buy you that second chance. Interestingly enough, guys, that's the first time we have seen a pairing advance on buck-off time. So the riders have been getting their job done. At least some of them have. The next opportunity falls to Ryan Dirty Dirt. He goes up against J.B. Mooney head to head, but really, Ryan Dirty Dirt first faces Ringo Kid. Yeah, and here's the thing with Dirty Dirt. I feel like if he could bring the fans from Oklahoma with him, yeah. this guy's unstoppable because every time he rides in Oklahoma, the state he's from, he rides awesome. So if he would just bottle that up and carry it with him, this guy's unstoppable. Ringo Kid unridden in his career. And it's going to stay that way. Dirty Dirt not making it very tough for J.B. Mooney. Dirty Dirt's official buck off time tie is under two and a half seconds. Well, you hear me talking a little a little earlier. You can't let the bull make the first move. Watch how this bull leaves out of here without Dirty Dirt. Dirty Dirt's pulling himself up there, and then the bull goes without him. And, you know, that's where you just want to set in a new, neutral position, and as the bull goes, you got to match it. So that means the crowd is about to be reintroduced to two-time PBR world champ J.B. Mooney. Sitting on the outside looking in. If the world finals were today, he would not be there. But he'd like to change all that. You know, J.B.'s it. You know, I said in the opening, this is a position he's never been in. He's never been in this point of his career with these kind of injuries, with all the injuries that he's had stacking up against him now. Father Time, you know, I always say is undefeated. He's starting to feel that, but this guy is a warrior. He, he's tough. He likes being in these positions when people think he can't win. Well, here's a big chance for him. This bull should go to the left. Look to see if JB can get his free arm up where it needs to be. A week ago, a bull went to the left with him. He tried to bring it across in front of his body, rocking to the outside. Look to see if he can get his free arm where he needs it. It's a weekend like this that not only can change a year, but it can make a year. He 
he's going to advance, but shades of last week, Mac, where the direction change happened, and you mentioned that the old JB could pick up that change of direction no problem. Today, a different story, but he will move on. Almost feel like here he got caught, you know, knowing I've got to make this move. This bull's supposed to go left. He makes his move. The bull just changes things up, and now he's behind. You know, and that's the thing. He knows that. The bull's at this level. It's a chess game. You know, you got to react off their movements, not let them react off of your movements. Let's send it to Leah. What's your takeaway after that? Worrying about what I should do and not riding. Well done, Craig. Well, what he's got to worry about now, except he never really worries about anything, is focus on the next round. The Music City Knockout continues. Dirty Dirt, the latest to fall victim. Last week, veteran Guilherme Marchi announced his plans for retirement at the end of the season. I think this year is going to be my last year. And I still enjoy what I do, but I think it's time to. He's coming up next. Guilherme Marchi, let the party begin for one of the sports ambassadors. As the Music City Knockout rides on from Nashville. Time to get your tickets to the 25th PBR World Finals Unleash the Beast in Las Vegas is now. Join past world champions and fans from around the world in this epic event at T-Mobile Arena. Call PBR customer service or visit AXS.com to lock in your seats today. Before we head back to the shoots, let's check in with Leah for an update on Derek Kolbaba. We're still waiting for the official update, but Dr. Tandy Freeman just walked by and he said, that Derek is out, and then he pointed to his ribs underneath his armpit, so we'll more, know more here shortly. I talked to Colton Jesse, and he said that it's not the greatest way to advance, but it's the way the world works when you're bull rider. Cole Baba, the first to be unable to answer the call. Colton Jesse catches a break as we move on to the shoots where we first get a chance to really talk about the man of the moment he was on the pre-show with tate and justin and it's galerme marchi the 2008 pbr world champ as you talk to him mac what were your impressions well my impressions are this is a guy that's done about everything you can do in this sport and he's done a lot of things that nobody's ever accomplished before and likely you might not see anybody ever accomplish again Ty, you faced a moment where you had to make a similar decision. Were you impressed with the timing of his? Well, I mean, it's different for every guy. You know, for me, I lost my drive. I didn't, you know, physically I was still doing pretty good. I was setting number two in the world. I had a 75% riding percentage at the time, but my drive was gone. I, I didn't have that thing that I'd always had burning in me my whole career that wanted to make me get out there and compete and try to win world championships. And when that leaves you in a sport that's this dangerous, you're, you know, you're betting a million dollars to make a penny is, is what it feels like. And, and, and so that's what it was for me. And I, I think it's different for every guy. And I think it comes at a different time for every guy. I was really interested to hear his response to a couple questions, guys. I visited with him earlier tonight in sports medicine. And whether you call it drive tire with the way he portrayed it to me, he just said he was tired, right? He was just tired of the grind. He said that he feels it way more right, Mac, than he did a year ago, five years ago, or of course, 10 years ago. Well, 629 rides at this level do that, absolutely. And I think that's what's so impressive. I mean, the world championship, of course, winning the world finals, all of those qualified rides. But just being able to stay at this level as long as Marti has, and to put in the kind of work that he's had to do it to stay here, it's, it's pretty amazing to me. You know, and the hard thing is he spent Every day of his life up to this point, being a world-class bull rider, that's, that's what he knows and that's all he does. And it, you know, it, it takes everything you are and everything you've got to, to, to one, get to this level, to two, stay at this level, to become a legend like he has become. And, you know, it can be quite a transition figuring out how to be something else because when all you've been is a bull rider your whole life, it's an adjustment no matter what you go into after that. He faces last chance, an appropriate bull name after his announcement last weekend. Six hundred and thirty is 
official. Marchi, a long way from done. And this crowd appreciates every second they have gotten to see him over the years, and they hope it's a number of seconds this weekend. And Ty, I feel like this is so impressive, watching him ride a bull away from his hand in what's turned out to be a farewell season for him. This is a direction he struggled for the last five years when bulls go to the left. You don't give him a whole lot of a shot. This is cool to see. You know, it's, it's a nice bull, and, and this just shows you that that he's kept that fire and he still has it. You, you know, you can see right there how pumped up he still gets when he makes a good ride. That's been what's caused his longevity. He's with Leah. What's the importance of making an announcement to retire and then still having that A game? You still have the A game, you know? 6.30 right now. I ride for my fans, my kids, and I enjoy for everything. Time to go. And I miss you guys. Gage Gay. Gage Gay wants to have a party of his own, which means he needs 85 and a quarter, even though it won't perhaps be a fan favorite to knock Marchi out of this event. That's what Gage Gay has to think like, right? There are no friends in this sport. Yeah, he's got to think about keeping his head down and staying on this bull because Gage Gay is a really talented bull rider. But for me, sometimes he just completely loses sight of what's going on and just starts making big moves where he thinks the bull's going, and that's where you see him get in trouble. Ty, he is only 24. Is that something that you can see being corrected with maturity, or do some guys never lose that? Well, it's hard to say because it's a, it's a constant battle throughout your career. You don't, you, no one ever gets to a point where you go, you know what, I got this. Like, you've got to work at it every day. You've got to work at the physical aspect, the mental aspect, the mechanics, and it changes all the time with what you draw. And, you know, we see times that Gage Gay looks as good as a guy can look. He's a, you know, he's a young guy that's in great shape. He, he works at it and he loves it, and we see him have a ton of grit at times. The key to, to being a world champion or, or really having longevity as a professional is learning how to do it day in and day out on a more consistent basis. And I think that's something that everyone has to work at their whole career. You, you, don't, you don't arrive in this sport or, or probably any sport. You've got to grind it out and you've got to work at it and you've got to, you've got to figure out what makes it work in your head and that's different for everyone. Mac, an interesting stat in terms of Gage Gay and Guilherme Marchi. You go back four years ago, the Iron Cowboy, I believe it was Gage Gay's first major. He knocked Marchi out of that head-to-head -head format. Yeah, and you've seen clear back then when this guy was a rookie, the things he was capable of doing. And as you said, a little bit of weird timing here with going up against Marchi again. And the thing about Gage, for me anyway, guys, is at the top of the show, I was talking about how every bull fits Jose Vitor Lemmy. I still feel like Gage has to draw the certain type of bulls for him to really have a lot of success. He struggles against certain kinds of bulls. Now he's going to rewrap, and it looks like regroup. He's got Lonnie West there, and I also believe Cole Livingston there helping him get ready aboard Mo. We often also talk about Ty, the fact that the longer this whole procedure takes, tires out the bull, tires out the rider, and ultimately you want both sides of that equation fresh for a big score. It's like staying out past 2 a.m. Nothing good's gonna happen. You gotta, you, gotta, you gotta get in there and take care of business. There's a lot of things that go wrong. You get more tired as you stay in there. For me, the thing that I hated about it is my hand would start sweating inside that glove. And whenever that would happen, sometimes your glove doesn't lose grip, but your hand would want to start to slide out of that glove. And I hated when that happened. I always like to put my glove on at the last possible minute, tie it on real quick, get in that chute, and try to get out of there as quick as I could before I started sweating. We've got a moment, so let's check in with Leah. Interesting that Ty's talking about his writing hand. The report from Sports Medicine came that he has a sprained right hand. I talked to him because we were working together in Cheyenne over the summer, and he said it was really bothering him then. And last weekend in Tulsa, he said he just didn't have any grip at all. He mentioned that he put a lot of rosin on, but Ty, based on what you're talking about, and the hand pot potentially sweating, that can't be helping right now. Yeah, and it's tough. You know, whenever you have an injury to your hand like that, that's when you've got to remember to ride the bull. Don't hang on. 
Gage Gay goes down ever so yeah. quickly. Marchi will move on, and Gage Gay, based on last weekend's couple outs in Tulsa, which Mac, we noted then that hand injury, and seeing this, it does not look good for him even in a second chance bracket. No, and give a lot of credit to this bull. This is an outstanding bull, but here's the thing with that hand injury. You can put all the rosin on your bull rope that you want, but until the mechanics are correct, rosin is not gonna be the answer. Second time tonight, we've seen a rider go down and stay down with sports medicine having to attend to them. It was first Derek Kolbaba, and now it is Gage Gay. Meanwhile, back in the shoots, 29-year-old Stetson Lawrence, who has struggled mightily of late on the Premier Series. He has only ridden three of his last 26 bulls. Now, during the summer, he won, was able to win one of the major touring pro events in Livingston, Montana. But at this level, Mac, he is really trying to refine his mojo. Yeah, and, and you see Stetson starting a lot of good rides. They just not finish them four or five seconds and everything goes wrong. And sometimes I think that's a lack of focus. Sometimes Stetson pulls his rope too loose and his bull rope will move and that'll cause some problems that if his rope was tight would never exist to begin with. He faces Joker. Joker finally finds his way into a left-handed spin, which ultimately results in Lawrence going off prior to the eight-second mark. But the good news for Stetson Lawrence fans is at least he went to 7.8. You know, you gotta, you gotta take a look at these bulls and, and how the great shape they're in, how perfect they look. You know, for people that, a lot of people haven't even ever seen a bull up close, but for people that have, these aren't your herd bull. They, you know, <laughs> you're talking about a whole different level of, of fitness and athleticism and, and feed programs, and you can really just see it in the way these bulls buck and move. They're just on a different level athletically. Now Alex Marsilio's task is to make it to the eight second mark because Stetson Lawrence's late buck off time has basically forced him to do that. He faces a good one from the Torres Brothers Bucking Bulls Company, Millennium's Buck. Yeah, and as you're saying, his task now is to make the whistle. The good thing about it, this different type of format and head-to-head, -head, that's for us to talk about. These yeah. guys, that's their task every time, is to make the eight seconds. So it's not like it's anything new for Alex here. No, you're right, because while you were talking about all everything else that you guys delve into on the pre-show on CBS Sports Network, we were doing a pre-show as well on Ride Pass, and that was one of the points I brought up is, as commentators, right, we're paid to create all these different scenarios. The scenario is so basic for what you guys used to do and now what we're looking at for these guys. The guy who rides the most bulls is gonna win, and riding a bull makes, you gotta do eight. Well, right, and you have the competition aspect, but you know, also you have the bull aspect. They don't know it's a bracket format. They don't care, and every time you Welcome climb over there, it's just as dangerous. Whether you're riding for five bucks or 500,000, a world title or in your backyard, the game is the same to the bulls. So for me, it, it, it never really was about what I was riding for, any of that. It was, it was, I was on something that could potentially kill me. So I had to stay focused and stay in the moment and live with what the bull was providing me. And that's what's so cool about this sport. It strips everything else away, and it's just the essence of man against beast. And, and you've gotta be making the moves that that coincide with what the bull's doing. That there is no living in the moment like there is in bull riding. That means for Marsilio, he needs 7.83. Got him for a slap. Oh, boy. Not only does he get slapped, but then he gets popped. Millennium's Buck with a head-to-head -head shot, if not horn-to-head, -head. and you can see Marsilio feeling the effects. Man, you're talking about a game of timing, and whenever you time that jump and kick right, it all goes smooth. But watch this, this bull blows in the air, throws off timing. Now he lunges without him. Look how it slides him back. That arm gets straight. It's only, you only got one place to go, and that's to rip forward down onto this bull's head. Boom. You're yeah, not you can see get, that one coming. Yeah, you're not going to get hit harder than that in any sport. Early on in our evening in Nashville, sports medicine is starting to get full. 
Alex Marsilio, the latest to walk back, but you look at bracket B, it's filled out. Parasito will face Tanner Burke. Cody Nance, the home state favorite, against J.B. Mooney. Denner Barbosa against his good friend Guilherme. And Claudio Montagna Jr. was waiting, and now he knows he will face Stetson Lawrence. All happening in the Tennessee capital city. Interesting part of this format is the second chance bracket. As we take a look at the number of scores, we've seen five so far. Kolbaba, the number one ride, but we got word, Leah Garcia updating us a few moments ago that he will not take part in round number two, which means he is out of the event. That slots Cole Livingston in the number one slot. As we look at bracket number C, it will start from the bottom moving up. So that actually means Lachlan Richardson going up against Brennan Eldred will start off this bracket. And when you talk about the Australian, Lachlan Richardson, Mac, this is a guy that I'm impressed with his maturity on some level. He still is very streaky. We've all talked about how he's cut this spring from tour. He's worked his way back, though, and really that attitude, or at least that mental approach, has never wavered. Yeah, and he's streaky at this level. Because as you said, in the summertime, he went and just dominated at the lower level events. And I think when you think of Lachlan, I just think of grinder. This guy is a grinder, man. He does whatever it takes to get back on tour, to make the world finals. And then when he gets here, you never can tell. I always think back to the 15-15 bucking battle that he won and the great ride he made, 92 and a half points on seven dust. You can just never tell about this guy. Ty, we haven't talked about it in a long time, but let's highlight the fact that 25 years ago, the PBR was started and has grown to the point of where we can talk about the Lachlan Richardsons of the world, where there are minor league events, there are events in other countries where a guy like Lachlan can get cut from the Premier Series, but there's so many points at the lower level, he can earn his way back. Well, and you know, the thing that sticks out to me about Lachlan, and we don't talk about it enough, is his mental toughness. It takes a lot of mental toughness to be in the dregs where he's been and just keep coming and showing up and keep trying. And then he might ride one of the a bull of the year contender for 92 points. That is a mental toughness on a whole other level because when two or three would buck me off, I'd start going downhill. Curly Drifter is the one that wins this duel. Not even making it to half the required time. A similar script for the Aussie. 3.91 will now be what Brennan Eldridge shoots for. Yeah, and I don't understand why you see Lachlan struggle like this at times, because this is a type of bull over the summer when he racked up all his points. He, he dominated these types of bulls to win all those events in. So, you know, I... I don't know why he struggles at this level, Ty, at times. You know, sometimes you see him where he wants to really set on his butt and really let his knees come up, and I think that I think that works better. Well, I know it works better on the nicer type bulls. When you get on those ranked bulls, you can't be setting on your butt and having your knees come up. You've got to be up and have that weight running down your legs. But, but as soon as I say that about his mechanics, it's like I was saying earlier, you might watch him ride the rankest bull out. We got that night, so. It will be interesting to see how Brennan Eldred handles the pressure of this major. He's up against California Kid. And that's an answer, Mac. You know, we have talked week in and week out, it seems, about Eldred and how there's this big question mark over him. You guys talk about his talent, but rarely do we see that applied ride after ride. He only needed 3.91 seconds. He only gets three. Yeah, and a, a really good bull. Give some credit to California Kid there, but even with that being said, that good of a bull, Brennan is more than capable of riding that bull. You know, that's, that's the kind that, if he's not tipped so far forward, he rides him all day. So Lachlan Richardson will move on. Brennan Eldred eliminated on time which means we transfer to our next head-to-head -head pairing. It starts with Brazilian Marco Aguche, who faces Rebel Call. Well, Marco, you know, this is a guy, he's a little bit like Lachlan. You've seen him bounce in and out. 
Uh, injuries have played a big factor in Marco's career. But when this guy's healthy, he can do some work, man. He rides really good. Best result so far this season, second in Kansas City. A top 10 result last weekend in Tulsa, going two for three. That ride aboard rodeo time in the championship round. Yeah, and you see it right there. That's a bull that the guys do not get by. They do not like to get on. Marco Aguche follows him around, tracks him around, rides him no problem. Ty sort of stealing your phrase or your words for a moment. You called Richardson a grinder. Same thing could be said about Marco Gucci. Yeah, and you know, you, you watch these guys like we're talking about that, that have these points where they struggle, and then when you add injuries on top of it, you know, there, there's no test like a PBR season. It, it's just there's no way around it. By the time you go through a whole season, you're going to have everything thrown at you. Hand pops out, simple to say. You're never gonna see a rider stay on a bull if he doesn't have his hand in a rope. That one ends at 3.04. You know, the thing that you gotta remember is there's always a reason that your hand popped out of the rope. It, it, it doesn't just pop out when you're doing things right. You know, I always say that your rope needs to be a secondary thing, but you see him get back and get out of time with that bull and you see that amazing amount of jerk that he takes right there. And, that just shows you when, when, when it becomes a strength thing at this level, you're going to win second every time. It's, it's not about strength. It's about timing and balance. Valderon de Oliveira knows a thing or two about retirement. He and Guilherme Marchi can compare stories. Valderon's difference, he came out of retirement this season. Great year so far for the Brazilian. And you look at the number of the rides, the percentage that he's at over his career. He faces Slinger right now with the simple task of making it to 3.05 or longer. Well, and I think Valderon has stayed together better than what a lot of us expected coming back out of retirement at his age I, I thought he would have a hard time getting through the season sound so far he's done a good job of that it will not be a qualified ride but it is indeed long enough to move valderon to the next round just under seven seconds means valderon's in round two Marco is in the second chance bracket for now. Well, and Valderon makes some really good moves right here. Pulls out there a couple of rounds to the left, and watch how far he gets to the inside of the spin right here. His hips are going in. He holds, moves out. That's a really tough move to make when you're too far in to not go too far out. He has to cut him off, catch him back up. The bull eventually gets him, but all of that effort worked in his favor, obviously, and he's going to move on because of it. We've got 10 guys through so far at the Music City Knockout. Valderon, the latest to get to celebrate, but that celebration could be short-lived. He's going to face Luciano De Castro in round number two. There are the big names, Colbaba and Livingston, as well as Sean Willingham, who you're seeing right there. Coming up, Canadian Dakota Butter. Butter! Just plain solid. Don't let this guy get a tank full of confidence because he'll be a real player. This guy can really ride. Butter went to work at the end of that ride. The guy can really ride. Butter's patience pays off. And Butter is in great shape the whole time. You've got to mark him over top of the bull. That was good. As the Music City Knockout rides on from Nashville. The second chance bracket as we first look at bracket number C filled out. At least we've got two slots left to go. It's going to be Dakota Butter and Edgar Durazzo facing off. Cody Teal waiting for one of them. And then Lonnie West and Nathan Burtonshaw will be the final pairing until we know who will face Kaiki Pacheco. Mentioned Edgar Durazzo, he is the one rider from Mexico, the five major bull riding countries of the world represented here in Nashville, Tennessee. It's been the theme all season long, hasn't it, Justin, in terms of Brazil having the most riders at each event. Yeah, not only the most riders, but when you look inside the top 10, they got a lot of them stacked up there too. So Brazil sending a lot of quality bull riders. Seven of the top 10 tie five of the top six in the world. And 
We all started talking about how anyone in the top seven could be our world number one after this weekend, and that includes Cody Nance and Jess Lockwood flying the red, white, and blue. Well, it's nice seeing it become becoming a true world championship. And you know, you, you look back over the years, and Brazil has raised this game considerably from what it would be without them, and that's just a fact. They come here and they, they've helped raise the bar. So, unfortunately, however, showing some rust. Hasn't been competing at this level since our Iron Cowboy major in Arlington, Texas, back in February. And for Durazzo, that is a rude awakening back. Yeah, you see him get jerked down when this bull steps on him. I mean, it hits him square and then hooks him on top of it. Ugh, doesn't even push him all the way down to the ground. Great illustration of why these rider vests are so important. Developed originally by the PBR's director of livestock, Cody Lambert. We move on to the Canadian, Dakota Butter, who in terms of his pairing, Uncle Gangster is the bull he'll face. And at this point, Dakota Butter, one of those sleeper picks, I think, Mac, who exhibits a lot of attributes that can really shine in this format, without question. No score, but Butter will move on. So it's Canada over Mexico, at least on this occasion. How does it go that wrong when it's going so right, McBride? I don't know, because that's a really good bull. Dakota doesn't ever actually have, you know, see, I think his ropes at his fingertips right here doesn't have much a hold, and, and that's probably something where he feels his rope at his fingertips, thinks about that for a split second, and then everything else goes wrong. We're taking a look at Nathan Burtonshaw. The 24-year-old was in Tulsa last weekend, but aside from that event, it had been since Tacoma. He was dealing with a broken right collarbone as well as a torn ACL. Has told me that the ACL he really doesn't feel. Feels like the rehab he's doing, Mac, has made it absolutely fine to ride bulls. In this instance, tonight he faces Mr. Valentine. Yeah, Nathan, he's not a guy that's gonna make excuses. This is this is a big, tough Australian guy right here. And he can really ride to the only problem he ever has is if a bull snaps his head up one time, he has a hard time catching back up then right away. It, he loses sight of the bull, and you see the bulls win. But when he keeps them in focus, this guy's tough to get on the ground. The big Aussie, the winner of last season's Australian finals, finished third overall in Australia in 2017. 2.19 seconds, finally gets his hand out of the rope and just barely advances. Or I should say, sorry, just barely even gets some time on the board. 2.19 seconds, which isn't going to make it hard, tie for Lonnie West coming up. No, and again, you see that left foot swing back behind him. There's nothing to keep you setting up straight if you don't keep your feet down. And I'll tell you, that gets real hard on the elbow and shoulder right there. Another great job by our bullfighters. Look how far out they are and watch them move into place. They know when the wreck's coming. Look at Jesse Byrne right here to the left. There's Shorty, Frank. They just, they know where to be and when to be there. That's the same arm where he broke the collarbone back in round two in Tacoma. He heads back to sports medicine as well. So Lonnie West, another one of the summer sensations. Three seconds, five top fives earned 340 points. Mac fourth last weekend in Tulsa, which was only his second event at this level. I spoke with him earlier tonight. He said this is without question the biggest event he's ever been in. Yeah, and I don't think he's going to back away from it. You talked about Dakota Butter being a dark horse to watch. I think Lonnie West is. Lost opportunity. Almost beyond reasoning. 
Lonnie West gets called for the touch. You heard Shorty call it. It looks like it's at 2.03 seconds. Gosh, in this instance, guys, you almost feel like you should challenge it to try to get one-tenth of a second out of it. I'm always, you know, you see him, he doesn't really get whipped forward. It's almost that foot swings back, and it's like, he, you know, wow. that this is the point where you're supposed to be forward. And, you know, it's almost like uh, it's a thing in their head. They feel that foot go back, and, and they just get to where they feel like they need to protect themselves in that jump. That's when you want to be forward. You want to be reaching out ahead of you. Based on what we just saw, it is going to be Burtonshaw moving on. And that is a big surprise indeed. Our round two is officially filled out. At the top, you've got the winner of our last major, Kaiki Pacheco, and world number one. He now knows he will face Nathan Burtonshaw. Can Cody Teal get something going against Dakota Butter? The Brazilians, Luciano and Valderon, will face each other, and Jess Lockwood will match up against Lachlan Richardson. Fifth PBR Unleash the Beast on CBS Sports Network is sponsored by Yeti Coolers, built for the wild, and by Ford F-Series. Visit PBR.com slash Ford for your chance to win an F-Series truck of your choice and a VIP trip to the 25th PBR World Finals. Unleash the Beast. Welcome back to Bridgestone Arena. We have made it through round number one. And now those advancing will face the top guys in the world in round number two. It's a Music City knockout. And man, oh man, is this head-to-head -head format living up to its name. Kate Harrison joining you alongside our PBR insider, Justin Felisco. Events like this with so many points on the line can really bring a lot of pressure to some of these guys. And I know you were seeing it back there in the locker room before these events. But for guys like Cody Teal, He's learned a few things because he was a runner-up last season here. Well, this event, Kate, so many potential bulls. Last year, Cody Teal got on nine bulls over the course of the two-night event. I asked him, what did you learn from last year? He told me that tomorrow night he will get on potentially another five bulls. He said, I'm going to eat a cliff Bar. I'm going to make sure I have enough energy and hydration in my body throughout the event that I'm not going to lose any energy. Last year, there was this image I'll never forget. He was dripping in sweat, and he was out of energy by the time he got to the final round. He feels like he's more prepared now to prepare himself for tomorrow. It could prove to be the snack of champions. If that's the case, I bet we're going to see a lot more of those bars in the locker room come next weekend. And speaking of, we often see with so many Brazilians on tour right now, one locker room with Brazilians in it, and then one that will have the Americans, the Canadians in it. With Brazilians being so dominant in this format, winning 10 of the last 14 majors, you notice something unique when they were getting ready. It feels like the world finals in the Brazilian locker room. There was so much seriousness that these guys were so focused on what's at stake at this event. They know that by winning this event, they can become a world champion. Kaiki Pacheco told me earlier he was watching rides from past events just to get himself focused for this event in the right mentality. The other locker rooms, the other approach, more loose and cool. Try not to take this thing too serious because you don't want to put too much pressure on yourself. Two different approaches, but all the riders know what's at stake. As for the Brazilians, that style, well, it worked out for Guilherme Marchi and Marcos Gloria, both who are moving on. Another guy moving on who could really make a name for himself, Cole Livingston. Cole Livingston came in as the 34th seeded rider in the 36 rider tournament, and he told me, yeah, I feel like an underdog, and yes, I know that winning this event, I can make a name for myself. He's gonna face Ramon de Lima, a top five rider in the world champion conversation. Livingston's not concerned about that, but he does know that the farther he gets in this event, the more people are going to pay attention to him, and a big win in Nashville would be a career-changing moment for the young man. One thing Cole told me he has not paid attention to is the bracket. He said he hasn't looked at it one time. He doesn't even know anything about it, who he's going against. He's just going to get on a bull when they call his name, and he's sticking to that. So we'll see if it works out. Round number two is coming up. Before we do, Leah Garcia is going to be back with the actor from the critically acclaimed movie, The Rider. Brady Jan Drew will join her right after this. Stay with us. More coming up from Bridgestone Arena and the Music City Knockout right here in Nashville.
Welcome back to the PBR in Nashville. My name's Leah Garcia, alongside the cowboy, the actor, and the star of the movie, The Writer. This is Brady Jandrew. And you actually play yourself in this movie. It's based on your true story alongside your father, your sister, and many of your friends. How was it filming this movie and having such an intimate portrayal of yourself represented? Uh, you know, it, it was a little bit different than what I'm used to. You know, I'm more used to this than I am that. But, uh, you know, I felt like it was just showmanship. Just like rodeo, just like training horses. I just had to be present. You know? What was your favorite scene in the movie? Um, probably that scene with me and Lily when, at, by the sunset over there at the Badlands. She's like, good night, son, see you in the morning. That came straight from her. It was all improvised. <laughs> I was wondering about that. That was beautiful. And the shot of you and Apollo riding across the plains, too, really got me. You're here at the PBR event. You've already described that. The cowboy way was brought up many times in the movie. What would you say to these cowboys in the cowboy way? Uh, you know, keep riding, because you don't ever know. Your egg might get cracked like mine. <laughs> it's a beautiful, beautiful movie. Very nicely done. Congratulations. Thank you so much, Leah. It's an honor to be here. Thank you. It is now available on DVD and digitally. You can catch it, and it's a great movie. When we come back, we're going to have more from Nashville in the Music City Knockout. graphic form, one of the unique elements of the Music City Knockout. It's the second chance qualifying bracket. At the moment, Silvano Alves seated first. Only eight after four rounds will move on. Usually, it's based on scores, but at the moment, it is all buck off time. Ryan Dirty to there at 2.41. We go back to bracket A. We have moved on to round number two. And here, Mac, we get to start with a former winner and former world champion. 2016 PBR world champ, Cooper Davis. And winner of this event the same year will go up against Sean Willingham. Cole Livingston, who advanced, now faces Ramon De Lima, former world number one. But let's begin the discussion of Cooper Davis, an article this week on PBR.com written by our own Justin Felisco. There is no yeah, doubt in Cooper yo. Davis's mind, Justin McBride, the stakes that are on the line. Yeah, and, and that's what I love about Cooper right now is this guy wants to win another world title. One of them's not enough for him. He was a guy that once he won that first one, you didn't know, okay, maybe that's enough, and, and Cooper will hang it up from here. He's decided that's not the case. He wants to win another gold buckle. He knows it's crunch time. You know, every bull matters throughout the year, but now they're in a, a position in the season where you don't get another chance. You know, there's not another major after this one. It's not like you do bad at this one and say, well, I'll get them at the next major when I have that opportunity. This is it, and you got to make it count. Cooper Davis has a really good bull to do that on here in Desperado. Ty, he cannot move to the world number one position, but he can move to the world number two position with a win here. Yeah, and it, trust me, he understands the importance of this event and, and the opportunity that there is. And, you know, and I think Cooper's another one of those guys that he doesn't let this format get in his head. He knows it's about gutting it out till the horn blows. against Desperado. And coming off last weekend in Tulsa Mac where we could see the frustration, hear the frustration, he was eager for tonight. Yeah, and that's the thing though, Cooper was frustrated after Tulsa. He felt like he let a couple of them get away. And I love seeing that frustration because he knows what he's capable of. He knows he can ride every kind of bull. He can ride the rank bulls that most guys won't get along with. That was an impressive ride. Best score we've seen all weekend, 88 and three quarters. He's with Leah. 
Cooper, are you finding your momentum again second half of the season? I sure hope so. That was a lot of fun, and I uh, had a little buck really hard, so couldn't ask for anything more right now. Watch Willingham. Well, for Sean Willingham, it was just as simple as it was in round number two, but with the stakes ratcheted up, he's going to have to up his game again. He needs 89 points. Let's take you back to round number one, where a board crash, he was able to get the job done, Ty. Yeah, you see him here, you know, this bull keeps jumping away from him, and you see how, you know, Sean has a tendency to kind of lean back and, and look up at the lights. I can tell you the stakes just got raised with the level that Cooper Davis took it to, and, and Sean Willingham is not going to get by with that same type of performance. You've got to keep that head down. You've got to go off of, uh, you know, you've got to make your moves coincide with what the bull's doing. You can't just stay on the end of your arm and take a jerking like that. Well, and you talked about it earlier. The bull power is just going to keep up and keep up. And you already seen that with the numbers that Davis posted. Willingham on the ground. Doesn't even need to go to the scorekeepers. Sean Willingham is eliminated. He will move into the second chance bracket, but now what we're going to start to see is some of these guys that got a ride in round number one. His 83 and a quarter is what slots him in the second chance bracket. So even though he bucked off, he's now the top seed in that bracket, Ty. Yeah, you just, when, when, you're, when you're riding back like that and letting them make the move and, and jerking on you, that's what's going to happen. You're always going to be looking up at the lights. Ramon DeLima with his first opportunity of the weekend is paired up against Kbar C's Inferno. I love this pairing right here. Ramon and this bull Inferno, but also with Cole Livingston. I think now you're going to get to see it come down to scores. Both of these guys have really, really good bulls. Here you'll see what guy can make the best ride on their bull to have the points to advance. And that rarely happens in this format. Inferno may have been on fire with that spin to the left, but Ramon De Lima burning a little hotter. That's another qualified ride. And that was a good one, too. Not very many guys get along with this bull. Ramon's now done it twice. This bull ties want the sliding bag. He's not kicking a whole lot. Ramon does a good job. He is tough when bulls go to the left. Yeah, really important on one like that to stay up there on your rope. If bull gets flat like that, one slides you back, and then the next thing you know, they're trying to drop you down to the inside of that. Well, we're going to find out, Justin McBride, if your crystal ball is working, because this is an opportunity not only for Cole Livingston, but to see two riders finally have to advance on scores. Cut the cord underneath Livingston. I don't know, guys. I think Livingston might have gotten him. Hey, cut the cord. Had some great back and kick and kept it up throughout. He needs 86 and a quarter to move on. 87 and a half. I feel like they called it right. I, I feel like this is a better bull, better jump, better kick. And when he comes around, it's not just that flat spin. You see this bull bringing it and Cole again for the second second bull in a row now. He's looking like he's firing on all cylinders. That's got to feel good at this event. He's with Leah. Cole, after round one, you ran back to the locker room. How's your health? How are you feeling? I'm feeling good. A little stoved up, but you're always stoved up around bulls. I'm feeling good. Now you can explain what that means, Craig. Well, 300 <laughs> points are in offer for the man with the highest cumulative total. Cole Livingston, the only man with two qualified rides. So that means he's in that pole position. Still to come, last week's winner, Jose Vitor Leme. Leme leaves, no doubt. There's your winner.
His first win of 2018, the second of his career. Most exciting guy to watch ride in the PBR. Wins the go round, wins the event. Dominating performance by Lemmy. As the Music City Knockout rides on from Nashville. This week inside the Monster Lounge, Come we on, have. Cowboy. Oh, sit here, hang out with us. Let's. I talk guess about you. we have uh, Jose Vitor. How are you, Jose? I'm great. Uh, Jose, I guess you have your translator here. <laughs> <laughs> well, we want to know a little bit about you. Tell me, are you a big party or a low key hangout with friends? Você gosta de festa ou você gosta de ficar com os amigos? Ah, eu gosto de ficar mais com os meus amigos mesmo. He likes to hang out with his friends. Why? Por quê? Porque, ah, eu, são pessoas boas e pessoas que me trazem tranquilidade também. E eu gosto de ficar junto com eles, fazendo outras atividades. They say some good people and bring him good energy and do stuff together. But you are Brazilian, so you don't like dancing? You know that, so you like to dance? I know like <laughs> No. no. <laughs> are you calm or do you get angry? Você é calmo ou você é brabo? Ah, eu sou tranquilo, eu sou mais very, calmo. Very calm. We can see he's very calm, you know? It's a baby. <laughs> <laughs> Inside the Monster Lounge, presented by Monster Energy, Unleash the Beast. Welcome back. Working our way through round number two. We already have two men advancing. Cooper Davis will face Cole Livingston. But next up, the pairing to see who will move on to round number three, Fabiano Vieira versus Marcus Gloria. Fabiano Vieira seated into this round. And Ty, he starts his quest to defend his title aboard the Bull Double Dose. You know, Fabiano has had so much success at this event, and this, this event has really made Fabiano in a lot of ways, but you know, the, the thing that makes me scratch my head with this guy, Justin, is, is I really truly feel like this guy should have been riding for a world championship for several years, and I feel like when he's on his game, he can ride any bull there is, but this is a guy that hasn't gotten out of the chute 15 times. Just takes no scores because he can't get out on bulls or you'll see him you know ride bulls that other guys can't even come close to riding ride them dead easy and then he might fall off in one jump and i've never seen a guy that can be so hit and miss and it all feels like it's right between his ears to me it, you don't ever really see him physically in a slump yeah and you don't see him do a lot of things wrong in his riding I think it is the mindset a lot of times that Ladies Fabiano has a bull that he doesn't have confidence in riding. That's when you see, you know, I, he might not try as hard to get out of the shoot or let one little thing bother him or let the bull get him set down right out of there. But when this guy's in it, there's nobody better. Let's check in with Leah. As we get ready to watch Fabiano ride, you can see that he's removed his hat and he's praying over the top of the bull. He is very Border respectful of these America animals. And when I've talked to him about the fact that he doesn't always get out on him, he's reminded me of the importance of making sure that everything's right for him. It's a dangerous sport. He honors the bulls, he honors himself, and he wants to make sure that he's safe and that he's ready before he goes. He doesn't really have an answer for why that's happened so many times. He just knows that every ride is the only ride that he needs to focus on. And so all of that old stuff, he doesn't even think about. He told me it's just right here, right now. Last weekend in Tulsa, wow. Double Dose sent a message of his own. You want to take that long prepping in the shoots? Well, I'm ready to fire whenever you are. Let's go back to Tulsa, though, Mac. We called it when he finished second overall last weekend, a three for three performance. And afterwards, he sort of tongue in cheek joked that, yeah, Tulsa was a great warm up for Nashville next weekend. Yeah, and that's this guy, if he is warmed up, yeah. look out. Ty touched on the success that he's already had in past years at this event. And, you know, I, I see no reason for him not to do it again. But you got to look at the fact that this year alone, he hasn't gotten out of the chute four times. I didn't even think that was possible, you know, to, to have a bull that you couldn't get out of the chute on. He's done it four times. So he's took his name out of the running at four different events this year. You can't win a world championship like that. I don't care how good you are. 
He has been number one in the world a few times in his career. It happened twice back in 2014. And Ty, you're right, to go back, he wasn't doing what we've seen this year as much early on when we were seeing him on tour. So I don't know if this is a habit that has developed, but Leah touched on it. Fabiano thinks it's much ado about nothing. He focuses only on the ball underneath him. Finally put on the clock by the judges. There's the knot. The defending champ has definitely come to play. Double dose, no match for Fabiano. You know, and that's like stepping off a curb to him. I mean, it's, you know, and that, that speaks to the level of talent this guy has and how he can just, it's nothing for him when he's on his game. So it's, it's weird to see that pendulum swing that far. Yeah, because he is a guy, he's got a great feel for the middle. You know, you don't see him doing a whole lot. This guy's had bad shoulders, you know, lot, lots of injuries, and you don't see him make a lot of big moves or do anything unnecessary. He just stays in the middle. A winner at last year's event here in Nashville, but don't forget he was third at last year's Iron Cowboy, fourth to start the season last year. A guy who knows how to rise to the occasion, he's now going to watch the new Brazilian on the scene, Marcus Gloria, who after riding Bugle Boy in round number one, needs 84 and a half to knock Fabiano into that second chance bracket. Gloria faces what's up, homie. Yeah, and he's going to have to finish this one. You know, that Fabiano already laid it out. He has got to get a score here. Just time and, you know, hanging on for a long time is not going to be enough. Got to get the eight. Not going to be there. Gloria done, at least for the moment. He'll slot into the second chance bracket, which means Fabiano Vieira has booked his ticket for round number three. The Marcus is the guy that had the huge summer getting all of those points. And, and I think you see when you come here, he said he was a little too overconfident at Tulsa, this or that, but it's also getting used to this level of bull. This bull starts out really nice, but he doesn't never just level off and stay that way. They keep getting stronger and stronger. You've got to be as strong as, at eight as you was at three. Well, we now get a chance to finally see last week's winner, Jose Vitor Lemmy. Since that win in Tulsa, a lot of ink and a lot of air has been expended extolling the virtues of this 22-year-old Brazilian celebrating that 22 birthday. Just a couple days ago, he faces Little Fool. Well, I'll say it again. I think this is the most exciting bull rider in the PBR right now. The most exciting rider in the PBR. That's the most didn't exciting. Show up. 1.34 second ride you're ever going to see. Man. That right there could turn out to be the most pivotal 1.34 seconds of the year for Lemmy. It's a, it's a humbling sport, and I'm telling you, it can't look any worse than this. The minute that bull leaves there, his arm's way up and got him into his hand. He's looking at the ground before halfway through the first jump. It's amazing to see a guy that looked completely unstoppable. If you're if you're basing it off of Tulsa, you go right there's your world champion. Turn around that you <laughs> yep. one week later and, and you got the complete opposite end of the spectrum. So guess what? Not only does Colton Jesse dodge a bullet because he's now in round number two because Derek Kolbaba couldn't compete. He couldn't buck off quicker if he, if that, that's what that I was going to say. <laughs> right. But now, somehow the best guy in the sport at the moment coming into this weekend bucks off as fast as anybody we've ever seen. And Colton Jesse only needs 1.35 seconds to move on. Well, don't know how I like to make predictions. <laughs> so let me make one here. Colton Jesse has got to make it longer than the 1.34.
Oh, oh don't jinx him like that, Mr. Right. Right. He can't hear me. <laughs> Not only was that quick buck off detrimental for Lemme's chances against Jesse, there's the nod. He advances, but not by much. Jesse moves on, 3.32. But let me finish my point on Lemmy, guys. Lemmy's buck off was so fast that he's already out of the top eight in terms of the oh, second yeah. chance bracket. He's done. His well, weekend's over. Here's the thing you got to think about about Colton Jesse. He actually didn't make it. Derek Kolbaba beat him and got hurt. So so he advanced, you know, on a, on a bad ride, and he kind of advanced again on a bad ride. Well, you're talking about going into some real buckers with zero confidence. Let's take a look at bracket A of the Music City Knockout. Davis and Livingston, solid rides to show they deserve to move on. Fabiano and Colton Jesse, buck offs, but that's the way the bracket crumbles. Coming up, Cody Nance. Nance is just going for it, man. 88 and three quarters. Cody Nance wins in Anaheim. Cody Nance continues to keep it simple, Ty, by his own admission. Nance wins Albuquerque, one of the marquee events to have on your resume. As the Music City Knockout rides on from Nashville. Sunday night at 9 Eastern, saddle up and watch the PRCA's finest Cowboys compete in Oregon at the Wrangler Pro Rodeo Tour, presented by Justin Boots, on the 24-hour home of CBS Sports. We're in round two here in Music City. And within the knockout, it's Bracket B's turn to shine. We start with Eduardo Aparecido facing Tanner Byrne, Cody Nance, the Tennessee native, going to face up against always crowd favorite J.B. Mooney, Dana Barbosa, Guilherme Marchi, and Claudio Montagna Jr. facing Stetson Lawrence. We begin our dialogue concerning Eduardo Aparecido against Wicked Stick. You talk about veteran bulls, Ty. This is a veteran bull against a veteran rider. Yeah, and you know the thing, the thing you got to do as a rider is, or that I always had to do when I had a veteran bull that I'd seen a hundred times and I knew exactly what his tendencies was. Every time I tried to rely on that, it seemed like it bit me in the butt. And and for me, it was always just so important to do, to just try to stay in that moment of reacting off of what what's going on on the field of play. And you know that's the thing about this sport; it's almost like a great pitcher facing a great batter. You know, if that curveball isn't working, then a slider's going to come. And, and that's kind of how the Bulls at this level are because they understand the game and they learn how to feel for that rider and change things up even when they prefer a pattern. Every major this season has produced a new world number one. The one major that a Parasito won made him number one in the world. That was last season, Iron Cowboy. And that really wasn't it, Mac, one of those, I think, pivotal moments in his career where he finally believed in much as his chances, as a lot of us had believed in his chances to be a world number one. Yeah, and he could crawl right back into this thing. Wicked Stick had a different plan, however. And that buck off at 3.5. and. Ty, you mentioned the tendencies of a bull. Wicked Stick pretty much has done that throughout his career. He's just had big moves, and he dares a rider to keep up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and he's, you know, he's not, he's not a bull that's really going to help you a lot. You see him really wanting to raise him up. You, you see him, he's looking to the outside. You see him prepare to land on his feet. You know, for whatever reason, his head wasn't in the game like it should be, because when Eduardo's head's in the game, he's as hard to get on the ground as anybody has ever been. Coming on the heels of Lemmy's head definitely not being in the game. You have to wonder if some of these guys just really aren't grasping what's at stake, like we've been trying to drive home. Tanner Byrne, his opportunity. I always stand, Mac, another veteran bull. Yeah, big, tough, strong bull here. Lots of forward movement. This is one, though, that could fit Tanner. Four. 1-3, and once again, we see a rider advance just barely based on buck-off time, but Tanner Byrne will move on against the Parasito. 
I thought this was a bull. He's a lot bigger of a bull. I thought maybe, you know, that would give Tanner something with those long legs to get a hold of. See him get worked to the inside. He tries to come out, and this bull, always you're going to know about this bull's forward movement. Tanner gets back, and then that's when you see all the momentum bring him over that bull's shoulder. The bulls are just going to keep getting tougher, too. I think this next head-to-head -head setup is going to give the crowd fits. They're not going to know who to cheer louder for. They first get to cheer Paris, Tennessee's Cody Nance. About two hours west of here is where Cody Nance grew up. That graphic, very important, I think, Justin, because this is one of those attributes we talked about, a guy not only who can get qualified rides, but who can fight for them. Yeah, the crowd's going to get their money worth when, they, when this shoot gate opens, no matter what the outcome is, because Cody Nance is going to give it everything that he's got. Here's the thing, everything he's got is pretty darn good. This guy's got, we talk about his effort and, and how hard he tries all the time. This guy's got a lot of ability too, you know, he does a lot of things right. And then he has that effort and determination when he does get in trouble to give himself a chance. And then he, and then on top of it, he stays in shape, probably better than any rider on tour. This guy is a specimen. Cody Nance, already a two-time winner this season. But you go back and look at some of the majors in New York City to start off the year. He was one for three. Then you slide to Iron Cowboy, where he was one and done. Next, you go to last Cowboy standing. He was one for three, but not the result he really wanted. Can redemption be found starting here versus Chopper? Crowd has gotten riled up on a couple of separate occasions. Not Chopper's best day. So now, are we going to see re-ride flags for the first time tonight? And there they are. So Cody Nance has a score. Does he accept the re-ride, which would be force awaken, Mac, or does he keep the points? Well, I look at it like this, Ty. He's 61 and three quarters. You know JB Mooney's up next. I would look at it as JB's gonna ride for sure. He's got a good boy. I think he's gonna be in the mid 80s. So without question, to me, I feel like I've gotta ride my re-ride to beat JB. Without question. And you know, I always say, you can live with giving it everything you've got and coming up short. What's tough is when you say, well, I'm gonna bank on that 61. Basically that 61 is pretty close to a zero if JB Mooney makes the whistle. That was a great chance to listen in, Mac, with, and then we also get to see the infamous thumb of Cody Lambert saying that Cody Nance will take it again, but Lambert gave him some pretty simple advice. That's always his advice when a guy asks him about a re-ride. If you feel like you've won all you can win, don't take it. If you feel like you can do better, take it. Pretty simple. And we just found out it's actually going to be red sails in the sunset, which has been a money bull for the guys. But let's talk about J.B. Mooney. He's matched up against Huckleberry. Yet another one from Chad Berger and his team. Opportunity. A qualified ride now puts the pressure on Cody Nance. And you could hear Shorty call that second round over the top. He's getting his free arm where it needed to be. And I think that was huge for Mooney, not only because he needed a ride tie, but because he feels he can get where he needs to be. Yeah, and I talked to him in the locker room tonight before the start of it, and he said, you know what, I can get that arm up. I didn't in Tulsa, but I can get it up. And I think on his first bull, he was so focused on getting that arm up that it almost cost him. This one come on around to the left and let him show that he can get it up there where he needs it to be. Showing some patience. He's with Leah. It's not an auto advance, however, JB. A sense of relief? Oh, yeah. You know, I've been listening to what they've been saying about my shoulder. Putting way too much thought in it. I've never rode bulls thinking. 
Always react, do whatever it takes to make the whistle. What were they saying about your shoulder? I can't get it up high enough. Guess I proved them wrong. There you go. That was the exact point that was made earlier, that JB loves to ride and prove people wrong. Well, however you do it, eight seconds is eight seconds. He's on the board with 87 and a half. Here's this week's athlete profile brought to you by Cooper Tires. Claudio Montagna Jr. not only does his job, but does it in an incredibly clinical way. Gostei muito da cultura americana, é uma cultura bem diferente nossa do Brasil. E procurei meu filho estar estudando. É, é tô muito feliz de estar de estar morando aqui, de estar adaptando a a cultura americana. Montana Jr. wins in Montana. At your Cooper Tires athlete profile, what we're getting set to show you before we advance further into bracket B is we need Cody Nance to leave the shoots against his re-ride bull red sails in the sunset. A re-ride opportunity. We've already touched on the fact that Cody Lambert definitely felt Nance should take this re-ride. This is one of those Bulls tie 44 career outs. A couple of those times has been against Cody Nance. He's never made the whistle, though, on this bull. You know, yeah, and, and you know, I'm a fan of this guy, and, and he's one of, the, one of the guys that I rarely bet against because you do see him have that effort. And I, I think in the home state of Tennessee, you're really going to see him pour that effort on. and. You know, going back to, to taking this re-ride, you got to look, look at a re-ride almost like a mulligan. You know what I mean? It's like you get a free chance to try to do better when you're in the weeds. And, you know, you can say, well, I'm going to lay up because I don't think that guy's going to drive farther than me. But it's going to be somebody like a J.B. Mooney or somebody like that. They are going to outdrive you. So this was a no-brainer. If he wouldn't have took this, we know where he'd be right now. J.B. Mooney has already registered 87 and a half points aboard Huckleberry. So for Nance to leave no doubt, he needs 87 and three quarters. If he does buck off, remember, based on the best eight scores, or if there aren't eight scores total after four rounds, it'll go to buck off time. But we've already got three of the eight slots in the second chance bracket with a score. So you have to figure, right, by the time we get to the end of the fourth round, guys, it's going to be eight scores. You know, this almost takes some pressure off you because it doesn't now come down to riding his bull. He's got to ride his bull very well. And so, you know, that almost helps you lose that wanting to clamp down tendency that, that you see guys have in this sport sometimes. He's got to leave that sheet going for it if he wants to beat JB. And stating the obvious, Mac, that is when Cody Nance is, is at his best. Without question. And this is a really good bull. His average score is just right around 87. So Nance is going to have to get everything out of him that he can to have that chance. Oh, bam. Red sails in the sunset ends the day and the weekend for Cody Nance. The quick buck off means he will have no chance at all to come back and the one rider from Tennessee gets a ovation from this home state crowd, but that'll be the last time they cheer for him. Man, Mooney, moving just, on. Yeah, just not in the groove. You see his feet just blow back up behind him. Tell you what, it made that bull look like a 95 pointer with the explosion that he blows Nance off of his back. Yeah, bull score of 44. You're right, Ty. He made that bull look very good. So now we move on to the part of bracket that's going to see three out of the four next riders Brazilian. We start with Denner Barbosa, who lost his world number one ranking at the Iron Cowboy earlier this year when Ramon de Lima won. He faces in this round, Mac, Chief Petty Officer. Yeah, and a lot of that has been due to injury with this guy. He had to miss several events because his riding has not dropped off. This guy is really comfortable on the back of a bull. The 11th ranked bull rider in the world. But still showing rust. 
Barbosa down after going one for three last week in Tulsa, his first event back. A quick buck off here means for all intents and purposes, he's done. What do you think, Justin? That's not, that's not <laughs> textbook for him. No, not at all. This is a guy that's usually, I was talking about how comfortable he is. And, you know, usually if he does get stuck into his hand, he just moves right back to the middle there. You can see he's completely out of it, head picked up and crashing into the shoes. Yeah, and that, that inside foot, his right foot wasn't helping him at all either. That It came up the whole way. Next up, Galerme Marchi. What he needs to move on is 2.49 seconds. Clover Mountain Bow doesn't give away many rides. In fact, when they met last season in Springfield, Missouri, it did not go Marchie's way, but again, whether it's career ride 631 or a ride that only takes 3.1 seconds, he'll move on. Yeah, and I like his chances against this. Well, I know that he bugged him off before, but check this out a round to the left from earlier in round one. Marchie looked really good that direction. This bolt's going to be to the left, not quite as, as nice of a spinner as this one, going to have more up and down to him. But I like where Marchie's at right now. And in there lies the secret. You know, that up and down, if, if Marchie can remember to ride the up and down, the, the left is going to take care of itself. You watch these guys want to get rigid in their back, sit straight up and just move over to the left. That's not going to get it. What you've got to see happening is when this bull's front end comes up, he's going forward. He gets the time required. Marchi will indeed move on. He has just booked his ticket for round number three based on a four and a half second ride. Well, that's huge that, that he gets that on time because the next bull that he could possibly face will favor him a lot more. Bo Beaver Creek Bow had a, or Clover Mountain Bow had a great day with him right there around the left. Long enough. <laughs> Send it back to Leah. Delamere, your experience obviously is helping you. What do you know about not quitting, even though you know that you're in trouble? You know, Leah, it's a big bull. I saw the, the, the time for dinner, you know, two points in St. God. Just help me pass three points here, it's okay for me. You know, it's kind of hard to move away from my hand what I pass for tomorrow. Claudio Montagna Jr. looked pretty darn good against great guns. But they're going to take another look at this. If he gets the eight right here, this is a big ride. That, that bull was a handful, had some movement to him the whole time. See if he ends up getting the eight seconds or not. But there was a lot of good stuff in that ride. That, that is a tough bull to get by. Trying to see whether or not he made the eight seconds. That's the first step in this process. The replay judge looking to see exactly when either he touched the bull, he touched the dirt, or his hand is out of the rope completely. Oh. Still got it. He's gonna get a score, I think, Craig. <laughs> I love it when they go to this frame-by-frame frame dissection. It can be any part of the bull rope in his right hand. And if it's there, yeah, you're right, Mac. It looks like he's going to get a score. Now, keep in mind, it'll be deducted a little bit for his positioning off the bull. That'll take away from his half of the score. Lucky for him, it kind of all came at once. Right. But that's still the last thing that they're seeing. 84 and a half is what he is awarded. So that becomes the standard for Stetson Lawrence. We heard about how Montagna Jr. And our Cooper Tires athlete profile is enjoying his time in America and adjusting to American culture. A win here in Nashville will certainly help him assimilate a lot more if not move him to the number one position in the world. Stetson Lawrence faces Zamperini. Got to get it going right here. He's kind of getting a second chance, advancing on time. Got to take advantage of that opportunity and finish the job here. 
Stetson Lawrence, where he is at, really needs a huge week here. To change the whole narrative of this season. Zamperini starts with some speed. Stetson nowhere near enough timing to keep up. That means Montagna Jr. will advance. Lawrence with his second buck off of the day. Setting down away from your hand will never work. You know, he's behind everything. He's going to catch all the power, going to kick him to the outside of it. I mean, that, that just, it won't work on that bullet. It won't work on any of them at this level that go that direction. Bracket B is decided. Round three, we'll see Tanner Byrne go up against J.B. Mooney, Guilherme Marchi against Claudio Montagna Jr. You'll be able to see those in other matches as well as our winner tomorrow on CBS. Coming up, last week's 15-15 winner and defending PBR champ. It's all in the rear view mirror for Jess Lockwood now because in the present, he just dominated. Man, that, and, and rightfully so. Lockwood leaves no doubt. He is not going to just hand over his crown willingly. As the Music City Knockout rides on from Nashville. A lot of money, but perhaps a lot of points. More importantly, 300 to be exact, to the winner of the top cumulative ride total by the end of Sunday on CBS. Cole Livingston, the only rider with two qualified rides. So at the moment, in a very commanding position for those valuable points, we have now moved on to bracket C's round at number two. We're gonna start at the bottom with Jess Lockwood and Lockwood Richardson. But before we get to that, let's join Shorty for his pick of the pen. Well, Craig, my Matador jerky pick of the pen is going to be Floral this week. This is a bull that's been around for quite some time now, but we haven't seen him very much on this tour. And I'm going to tell you what, I can't figure out why, because this bull is electric. Last week saw him, he was out one or two jumps uh, with Brandon Eldred, around to the right, had a lot of gas. It was a very uh, exciting buck off, but I'm going to tell you what, Lachlan Richardson's got the bull. It's going to be into his hand. He's going to have to have his ducks in a row to ride this one. A lot of gas here, guys. Lachlan coming up against Zorro. So good. You Mentioning those stats that Shorty talked about. Only one this season. That was last weekend in Tulsa versus Brennan Eldred. But in his career, a perfect 12 and 0. And he was really impressive with Brennan. I, I agree with everything Shorty just said. If, if Lachlan, if Lachlan does make the whistle here, you're going to see some big numbers because this bull had a lot of speed, a lot of kick. Uh, Lachlan's going to have to be getting after to keep up with him. But this is the kind, too, that you start hyping up the bull, hyping up the bull, and then and then Lachlan will just take him down. <laughs> well, Ty, that was one of the points you made the last time we saw Lachlan. That's what has you scratch your head so much about him, right? Well, here's the thing. You know, he, he forgets the past. He's not bringing the baggage of his of his last, you know, not great ride with him. And, and he starts fresh every time. And, you know, I think that's an important attribute to be able to have to, to let the bad ones go. Shorty said he'd come fast and furious. Zorro does, does, excuse me, just that to the right. The Australian touches at 3.62, very similar to his buck off time of round number one. This is a great little bull and just getting better by the second. Yeah, and, and obviously we're gonna get to see more out of that bull in the coming months, but he is some kind of impressive. And a lot of times when they're this fast, they don't have as much kick as this bull does. He'll gather himself up and really kick out. That's, a, that's an outstanding little bull. So that leads us to the introduction of our defending PBR world champion. Dire Straits playing in the background has become his theme song for 20-year-old Jess Lockwood facing a bull by the name of Lock and Loaded. This is one of those bulls that even though he hasn't been ridden much lately for a top rider, Mac, like Jess Lockwood, you expect him to ride these. Yeah, he's got to be thrilled with the chance he's got right here. This a boy just watched his buddy Cooper Davis get bucked off of this bull right at the whistle a week ago. 
Bulls should be around to the right with Cooper. He started out pretty tight and fast, and then as the ride went on, he widened out a little bit, but always up and down, got a lot of kick, really good timing. It's a really cool bull. Big moments for Jess Lockwood, perhaps, this weekend. Ranked number seven in the world. He could be the world number one come Sunday. But he does not start that quest for the top spot in the manner he had hoped. He had a couple moves to bring him centered, but his fans don't like the look of that. Remember, it was a groin injury last year that caused him so much consternation. Jess Lockwood hobbling out after being bucked off at six and change. Yeah, you never like to see that. And Man, what a good, these two bulls that were paired up with these last two guys were both great little bulls, but this is a smart little bull because you see he's really good, really good. Jess is riding perfect, and then right there he changes up the timing just enough that it ruins everything. Yeah, not only changes up the timing, but changes up the trajectory of where he's coming around. You see him bounce sideways and kind of open up and almost stop that spin. So it was changing momentum, changing everything, and, and uh, that was the makings of a great ride on a really good bull. Well, he heads back to sports medicine, guys, but the fact is he will advance to round number three based on buck-off time. So we move to Valderon de Oliveira, his second attempt of the weekend against a bull by the name of Breaking Bad. Yeah, and on paper, this one doesn't look great because this bull's gonna go to the left with a lot of forward movement and Valderon's right hand down. But this is not a big bull. It's gonna throw a whole lot of up and down at him. Valderon has got a chance to muscle his way through this one because that's what he's, that's gonna be his game plan. He's gonna set down, try and cut this bull off around the corner. For a lot of his career, Ty, as we all know, muscling and out muscling bulls has been his MO. But at least of late, past few weekends of this season, that has not worked at all. Now he's on the clock. If he doesn't nod by the time he gets to zero, he'll be disqualified. One of the points we talked about with Fabiano earlier. And this is a veteran bull that's been around a lot. You know, he, he's setting really good right there. Just like you predicted, Mac, he does go to the left. Valderon unable to keep up. Out-muscled and outworked. It ends at 3.3. Well, on a bull that's gonna have some forward movement, really any of them away from your hand, setting down, setting flat on your butt is exactly the opposite of where you wanna be. Every time his front end comes up and moves away from you, you've got to chase that. You've got to get up there and go with it. Because if you set back, you catch all the power and you catch all the whip. So it's not necessarily a tall task for Luciano De Castro, but the man who was number one for one round earlier this season, after round number one in Tacoma, he's in position to perhaps regain that number one ranking, but he's got to get past Valderon. He needs 3.4 seconds. Yeah, and this, this is a guy I've been pretty high on that I think has a lot of ability, rides really well either direction. I, I would expect Luciano to get a qualified ride here, not just make it back on time. I think this is a bull he's more than capable of riding. Nine top tens this season, a winner in Little Rock earlier this year at the last Major, the last Cowboy standing, he went two for three that weekend. Third at Iron Cowboy this year. Has all the skills. And now needs to not. Does he get the 3.4, but versus Buck John, he makes it all the way to eight. Luciano with yet another quality ride, which will see him advance. This looks good on a big, strong bull. 
Right. Justin, I notice your confidence is down a little bit. You're starting to kind of temper your <laughs> predictions a little bit. I said he would, that wouldn't go on time. He'd get a score. <laughs> you said, I think. I think. I think. <laughs> kind, of, kind of tempering it just a little. Yeah. It's that, it's that time, time to leave myself a little wiggle room. <laughs> yeah. It's that time of the evening. <laughs> Getting close to 1030 here local time. You know, just, the predictions don't get as fervent. Yeah, I just quit making predictions. <laughs> That's how you solve that. Slow learner. <laughs> Lockwood and Luciano have moved on. We're about to round out the evening with the final two pairings. Stay with us. Still to come, last Cowboy standing champ, Kaiki Pacheco. There it is! Kaiki Pacheco converts the three-peat. You just cannot say enough about the turnaround Kaiki Pacheco has had in the past few weeks. He is our new world number one. As the Music City Knockout rides on from Nashville. College football season is just around the corner and Monday night at 7 Eastern. Join our team of experts as they tackle the hottest topics on the gridiron. It's inside college football right here on CBS Sports Network. Inside the Bridgestone Arena, a close up look of the official truck of the PBR, the Ford F-150. We only have two slots left to fill in bracket C. Is it going to be Kaiki Pacheco, Nathan Burtonshaw, Cody Teal, or Dakota Butter? Two of the four will move on. We start by heading north of the border. Canada's turn to impress. It is Dakota Butter, Mac, up against Kid Fletcher. <laughs> I'm going to stay optimistic here. I like Butter's chances, man. I really think that this guy, if he could keep his feet down, the one thing that happens with Dakota sometimes is he, he gets a hump in his back, it takes the weight off of his feet, and you see him go over a bull's head. But as of late, he's been pretty good, been pretty good at keeping that under control. In terms of Butter's season overall, I think this has been one of those years where he's really come into his own tie in terms of we used to think that he could ride well. In 2017, he started to show flashes of that. This year, the consistency's been there. Well, you know, and that's the thing. I, I think it takes everyone a minute to find their stride when you get to this level because there are no give me's up here. Every time that gate cracks, you're on something that bucks. Well, that's another surprise, much like Jose Vitor Lemmy. To see Dakota Butter get bucked off that quickly, Mac, I guess just tip your hat to Kid Fletcher. Yeah, I give the bull credit, but I was talking about Dakota's feet coming up on him, and right there's a prime example of, you know, that's the one thing that, that still holds this guy back is, is controlling that, but Shorty Gorm, that was pretty, pretty catty moves by all the bullfighters. Those guys are always in the right spot. Yeah, once again, that triangle of protection converging around. Dakota Butter a little shaken up at the moment. Not a big task. Well, that's Kid Fletcher in his debut out. Really not wanting to leave the spotlight. Goes back to the care that these animals are given in terms of this whole process from when they leave the ranch to when they have to leave the arena. Now we transition to Cody Teal hey, way, prepping aboard Mason's money. And Ty, you know, 1.16 seconds is all he needs. Yeah, this ought to be a slam dunk for Cody Teal. And, you know, again, you've got to forget about that because this game stays just as dangerous no matter how long you got to make it. And, you know, when you look at the way the points are structured around this event, it's important to get a good score and keep moving on. And, there, you, you know, you want to milk every drop you can get out of out of the points from an event like this because there's more points here than anywhere. And this is the last one of the season. You know, this is a big deal. If you're wanting to be in that race, it starts right here. Well, we'll spend a lot of Sunday's show on CBS parceling exactly the chances of these top contenders. But for a guy we talked about at the top of the show, right, Mac? For a guy like J.B. Mooney, 
this is just one of those things that will assure him if he's able to go all the way and win this, these points will assure him. There he is helping out Cody Teal, by the way. <laughs> you got to be kidding. Cody Teal barely squeaks out the necessary time, but it's enough. And yeah. Cody Teal. Well, this is one with square wheels, and you can see him bouncing on that front end and changing it up and shooting forward. You know, that trademark, that's old Bushwhacker trademark. That's Red Rock's trademark. Those, when, they, when you see him bounce off that front end and change up the timing, and they're going up before they finish going down, that makes them real tough. And that one there, you saw it just really string him out and get him on the end of his arm and throw him out over there. You, you know, it's, I ain't been on a bull in a long time, and when I see one like that, it just makes you cringe. And go, oh, they just, you know, it just never gets easy on one like that. If there's ever been a time for a rider to shut out all the outside influences and all the supposed expert opinions, it could very well be right now for Nathan Burtonshaw. He's matched up head-to-head -head against the number one rider in the world, Kaiki Pacheco. No man has won more majors than Kaiki Pacheco. But oddly enough, I think, Mac, this Burtonshaw matchup against Handsome Jeff might be considered better than Pacheco's matchup. He's got a great shot right here because he's got such a good bull. Uh, Pacheco's got a bull that might not fit him so well if you go off what you've seen out of Pacheco a week ago. This Burnshaw's got a really good bull in Handsome Jeff. I mean, this is how you put the pressure all on Pacheco right here. Sean Willingham, the last time this bull was out on the Premier Series, rode this bull for 87 and a quarter. That was back in Columbus. Burtonshaw's got the chops. No score, but he gets enough out of Handsome Jeff to at least make it interesting. It won't be a slam dunk for Kaiki Pacheco. Burton Shaw, though, is going to need some luck. And I thought he had this one knocked out. I mean, he's in good shape right there. Misses it one time, gets behind everything. Uh, you know, and, and he put some heat on Pacheco. Pacheco's going to need to get really close to, if not make the whistle right here. And he's got his hands full with Buckeye Bill. We end our evening with a final pairing that fittingly contains the number one rider in the world. Kaiki Pacheco faces another one from K Bar C Buck and Bulls and their teams, this time in the form of Buckeye Bill. Ty, they've Kaiki met before Pacheco. these two. It went the Bulls' way in Jacksonville last season. This bull's going to be to the left right there. I, I like Kaiki in this matchup, and, and, and I know he's gotten him before, but you know, I think the mark of a great bull rider is you don't let him get you again, and he knows what to expect this time around, and we'll see if he can right the ship. Was last week in Tulsa a wake-up call for Pacheco? Very quickly, we're going to all find out. He needs 6.3 seconds to advance. And for me, it's which Pacheco shows up. Is it the one that leads the world standings, or is it the one that a bull turns back to the left and he sits down and, and lets the bull finish him? Because if Pacheco's on his game, Buckeye Bill doesn't stand a chance. No bull does when this guy's on his game. No! Our world number one could very well be eliminated. Let's go back to that buck off time, 4.91. That will slot him into seventh in the second chance bracket. So guys, the door has officially swung wide open for the six men chasing Kaiki. Boy, he never could get set out. And you see him, he's just, he's juggling it the whole way. And he never could find that groove. He never could get in time and get his feet down. He was trying to hold, you know, for the 4.91 4 seconds, he was trying to find that position and never even got close. It may not be the buck off herd around the world, but it might be the buck off that changes the world number one. Let's send it to Liam. 
Nathan's standing by. He's been shaking his head and walking away, not happy with the way that you're advancing. Yet you've got to capitalize as a cowboy, right? Yeah, I definitely got to capitalize. Um, you know, I guess it's a bit of luck, but not really happy with the way I rode tonight. Um, you know, it's gonna definitely gonna be different tomorrow, hopefully. So. And you just upset the number one rider in the world. Yeah. Um, you know, I should have rode that bull. Good looking bull to get on, but, uh, but I'll take it. Greg, thank you, Nation. Well, I like that approach, right, guys? Wasn't really willing to take the bait from Leah, but more upset with himself than celebratory that he had knocked out Pacheco. That's how bracket C will look in round number three. Burton Shaw against Cody Teal. Luciano against Jess Lockwood. We'll be back to wrap things up. 25th PBR Unleash the Beast on CBS Sports Network is sponsored by Kubota. Visit KubotaUSA.com today. By B&W Trailer Hitches, makers of the number one selling gooseneck hitch in America and the official hitch of the PBR. And by Wrangler, long live Cowboys. Sunday on CBS, Mac, we're going to get to see the best bulls in the business. Yeah, smooth operator leading the way. He's had a huge summer is why I say that. Coach E's in old Fort Day is really good also. Ty, in terms of the 12 riders that we know advancing, let's take a look at their world rank. There you see it, a number of them in the top 10. I'll tell you what, Cole Livingston is looking really, really good, and so is Cooper Davis. Speaking of Cooper Davis, Mac, let's show everybody the Kubota Tractor's ride of the night. It was indeed Cooper. Well, if you're one of the top guys in front of Cooper right now, you should get nervous because Davis is dangerous when he's riding like this. 88 and three quarters aboard Desperado. I mentioned earlier, Davis can't be the world number one after this weekend, but he can move to second. Speaking of second chances, these are the eight qualifiers, but remember, those eight will not be set tie until after the fourth round. Pacheco slimly still in there. Yeah, hanging by the hair of his chin, chin, chin. <laughs> well, two rounds of the Music City Knockout are in the books. There's much more bull riding coming your way this weekend. Be sure to tune into CBS at 1 o'clock Eastern on Sunday for the exciting final rounds from here in Nashville. For Ty Murray, Justin McBride, Leah Garcia, Shorty Gorham, Pete Harrison, Cody Lambert, Justin Felisco, and our entire crew, I'm Craig Ummer. Thanks for watching. Don't